Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we're going to paint a large robot for our sci-fi layout. Now this robot I found at the local Goodwill store and just paid a few dollars for it. Um, I think it's going to be a great addition to the layout. And behind me, you'll see the start of the next big project for our sci-fi layout. But we'll talk about that at the end of the video. All right, well, like always, we have a lot to do, so let's get to it. Okay, next we're gonna start to put value on this using our airbrush. And I want to show you that this is the compressor that I'm using. And the airbrush is this. Okay, so the first color that we're gonna use is light rust. Now you just shake it really well. There's a metal ball inside here, which helps to uh, stir it up. And it's airbrush ready. So all we have to do is pour it right into the airbrush. Now it's a pretty large robot. So I am actually going to add a couple drops of thinner to make the paint last a little bit longer. Now, hopefully you can see, but on the vents here, I'm spraying it and then I can get um, a damp paper towel. And the yellow that's on here is a satin finish. So I can simply wipe over it and the brown stays inside the vent. So again, we'll spray this side. Then take our damp paper. And you can see I'm just going one direction. Now we'll seal this with a dull coat when we're done. Okay, that color is all done. Now, I'm going to take this off-white color and we're just gonna spray down just on the top portions of stuff. Now I just ran some water, just ran some clear water through the airbrush. Here are the plates that go on his legs. Now I'll just run some water through this and we'll use a darker color now. Let's try using a shader dirt So airbrushing is really not that hard. I think a lot of people are just scared about it uh, because of the unknown. They're just not sure 
um, how to properly use it, how to clean it. But if you have all the stuff that you need right next to you, it's not gonna be a problem. I keep a small bucket that has water that I spray into, that's my dirty water. Then I keep a water bottle that I can pour water into the airbrush that is the clean water. Um, I keep a small paintbrush so that I can keep that paintbrush wet and wipe the, the end or the little nozzle um, at the end of the airbrush to keep it from getting clogged. And the cleanup is easy. Just run some clean water through it, then run some thinner through it. Um, it easily comes apart. Clean your needle, put it back together. It takes minutes. Um, it's very, very simple. And it's such a great tool to have in the shop. Uh, once you become comfortable with using it, the effects that you'll achieve with an airbrush are just incredible. Okay, let's start to unmask this and then we can work on the uh, gray metal sections. Okay, everything is unmasked. I still left the masking tape on the, uh, the visor here, the eyes, this part, and these two areas. But the rest is unmasked. And then these go on there like that. I'm not gonna put those on yet because I wanna do some painting on the metal. Okay, next let's use a wash. Starship, and this is a wash, so it's okay if it runs all over. I want it to add a lot of dirt and grime. Okay, here's where we're at so far. Um, next, I think I'm going to take a sponge and start to rust up um, the yellow section. So we'll We'll just start with the yellow first. Okay, so I'm using bittersweet chocolate and a sponge. And you can get um, grout sponges from a hardware store like Home Depot. And it's for wiping grout off of tile. So you just wanna pick at it so it's not completely flat. It has some odd shapes to it. Keep pouncing it until a lot of the paint comes off of it. Now we can take off the leg armor. Makes it a little easier. Now you can also take a small paintbrush all right i've got some sponging done on the top part Now I'll do some brush work. All right, I've been doing some dry brushing. And it's probably hard to see, but even on the dark brown rust areas, <laughs> this this is such a big project. It takes a long time to paint something this size. Okay, so I have been adding pigments. Uh, I have light rust, winter soil, 
and metal slag. Okay, next I've made a black wash. I'm going to um, paint his feet. First, we need to take off these. Now we'll do some more dry brushing with the uh, dry brush paint. Now I'm gonna paint the bottom trim here all silver. And I did mix a little bit of the black water with it, kind of thin it out. Now we're going to take winter soil and dirty up the feet. Well, I know it's been a while since we've worked on the sci-fi layout, uh, but I do have some big plans for this. Um, the first thing is that I want to paint the ceiling a dark gray. So after thinking about this for so long, I want this to look like you are inside a giant space station. We're still on planet Earth, it's just not on ground level. Um, I don't know how far up we are, but um, it's up above uh, ground level. So this area up here, um, I need to put gray panels up there so that the gray here goes all the way up and then there'll be a dark gray on the ceiling. Now, after the ceiling is painted a dark gray and we get gray panels on the wall behind these structures that match this gray, my plan is to take matte board and cut shapes, all different shapes that get tacked to the ceiling. And then from those, we can put, we can put large vents, uh, we could put boxes that have wires that drape to the structures. That will blend all of this together. Now I'll turn the camera around and show you what I have planned uh, for the wall over here. So at the beginning of the video, you saw in my workshop a large diorama that I had just started. Eventually, that large diorama is going to sit right along here, going along the whole backside of the couch. And the train will run right on top of it. And then that train will continue around the corner and over to the other side where we just were. Now the train is just point to point. So it'll run all the way over to this corner and then behind me over 
and it'll just run back and forth. And same on the upper level. Now to really sell the look that we are inside of a structure, on this wall, I'm going to have a large door where spaceships fly in and out. So uh, we'll have it angled in the corners and then I'll have, I'll show some of the doors um, where it's partially closed. And then I'll do a big painting of outside. And I think that'll really give the illusion that we are inside and then the painting uh, will show the outside to really create the illusion. And then of course our new diorama will be right in front of it. And maybe on there we'll have some red blinking lights for the spaceships coming in to see. Um, we'll have, you know, the yellow and black stripes, uh, the safety stripes. Um, it's going to be exciting to work on this wall. And then we have another bridge that goes over the top of the opening for the upper level track. So that big door will be right in the center. So here is the lower level that the train will run on and here is the upper level that the train runs on. Now I would like to complete the woodworking around the room to get the lower level track laid and get a train running. I think that'd be very exciting. It's still going to be a while because we still have to build or custom build um, trains and cars because it's all sci-fi. For those of you who are new to the channel, um, it's O-scale track with G-scale equipment. And the reason it's G-scale is because all of the figures are three and three quarters of an inch tall. And G-scale, I believe the figures are three inches tall. You can see I've got parts for our elevator that's going to go right here. Um, there's so much to do on this layout, uh, but it feels really good to be back working on it. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And a special thank you to all of my Patreons. All right. Well, until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.